um, you know, to getting over a breakup is to begin confronting it today. How can you win love back? To win love back, you know, I think it's going to be a different person that wins it back. I think that all, you know, I see it all the time. You know, you think two weeks go by, two months go by. I'm a new person. I'm going to get this person back. We, yeah. and, and they'll give it a go another time. And there's not enough time. You know, they say that like we try to change people and we could barely change ourselves. Yes. And we can't change when it comes from like the most intimate parts of ourselves. We can't change that in two weeks. We can't change that or expect it to happen in, in two months. Can we win love back? Absolutely. But both people have to come back with a new perspective and an understanding that's different than the time before. And it can't just be you, it has to be another person. And that will ultimately, I mean, that's why they say dating is about timing. I used to hate that, but it really is about our two people lined up and ready to do this. So you can win love back but two people have to want to be winning it in the same way and for the right reason, you know? Yeah, that's totally true. It, has, it takes two people to come back um, in the scenario and with a different attitude and not with an attitude of holding on to the past, well, you did this and you become a scoreboard, right? And I think what at the end of the day, it's more being genuine of, you know, what didn't work in the past. Now we're going to move forward. We're going to find a solution. What would work as a team and not, you know, creating the word I, me and myself and I, it doesn't help. Right. I mean, and I think it's so difficult. I think it's really difficult to, you know, leave what happened in the past and, and trust, you know, yourself or the other person the, or the relationship that it might not betray you again. You know, you either, you got to either trust it and let go of the fear. Because I think it is hard for people to go back into a relationship really letting go because they feel betrayed and then they bring that same fear that it's gonna happen again and they're gonna be shown that they're a fool. So you, you've really gotta be coming from a really strong place and a place where you can still speak openly about with, the, with your partner about fears that you might be having, you know? Yeah, yeah. no, it's true. And I wanna talk about betray. I know that you wrote something very uh, significant about this area and it's such a hot topic and I get it all the time. How to survive as a secret wife. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, that one. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was talking about that column. And yeah, it wasn't the first time that I had heard of it either. But uh, I guess for like your viewers, maybe, um, just to kind of speak of that. A, yeah, she was a secret wife, but it, she was a secret to the family, to his family. And of course, and he had had a, a marriage before for 20 years where that woman was a secret too. And of course, that makes you think that, you know, you hear about this. So a, a man, has, I think it's one of the most difficult things because if you, ha if you feel like you're a secret, um, you ultimately feel like you're wrong. And for someone that's even carrying a secret and not able to be as open, I mean, honestly, I've done this with a fam my family a bit. You know, my father he has an idea about who I should be with. Hmm. And part of me, the relationship I'm in now, I wanted to go more slowly and not say anything to him about it. But I never really thought about what that might mean to my boyfriend now, that like I was having to go so slow. And also it made me feel like if I keep on doing this, like, am I not with the right person if I can't be honest about who I'm with? Yes. That's the trick about being secretive. And that's the trick about the person holding the secret is that, you know, are you holding a secret because you're afraid that someone else is going to think it's wrong? And do you feel like it's wrong? Um, so 
I mean, that was a really interesting dynamic. And um, for this woman, you know, she kind of got into the relationship. I think the biggest thing that I saw in it was that she said that, you know, she would only be a secret for a year. And then they would tell the family, right? And what I was saying to her is that it's a mistake so many of us make, is they end up saying yes, you know, um, or I do, you know, yes, I'll be engaged to, or um, mm -hmm. I do. And they're saying it to what they're being promised or the vision that they have, what it will be eventually. Yes, I'm going to marry you because I'm so excited about what I see our life being in a year, you know? And you have to say I do and yes, and make the commitment. And as if nothing might ever change. If nothing were ever to change, would it be worth committing to? Mm. Is this enough as it is? Because that was the problem. Mm. She was saying yes to an idea. And those ideas sometimes, you know, the promises are never given to us sometimes. And sometimes it's out of malice. And sometimes it's just how life works. And I can't deliver on that promise. Mm. Uh, so that, that was what I thought was her biggest, her biggest issue. Is you know, began with herself. Why did she allow herself to commit to something that she was saying yes to a year down the line? Why not just wait a year? Mm. You know, if it was all about time. And I think ultimately what she was finding because it was like five years later at that point was that she might have gotten involved with someone that was never going to be the person um, that she said yes to. So Secrets, man. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not a secret. Like, I hold secrets, I guess, but I don't have secrets with people. I mean, that's like the biggest thing in my life. Yeah. I, I go back to like the Truman Show when I was young. I don't know if you ever saw that movie, but I have lived from the moment I saw that, I lived my life as if I'm on a reality show and everyone's watching. I swear to God, it keeps me honest, you know? And I think that like, I, I encourage it. No. Yeah. I yeah, and I, I totally support what you're saying because secret hurts. Yeah. And it not only hurts you, it's like you're living in a shadow of something that you aren't really supposed to. Yeah. And I mean, how can people, the thing is like resentment. Oh, yeah. You get in the way, especially like, you know, with being physical and intimacy, if you feel like you're holding someone in doubt or someone is holding you in doubt, if there's any feeling that that might be going on, you know, women especially, like they're not there, you know, yeah. they're in the head and then they can't feel it and they're waiting for sex to confirm something and yet it can't confirm it because they're in their mind. And I, I've seen how important it is to what it can feel like when you're not doubting what they think about you and what you feel really about them. So the problem with secrets is that it creates so much doubt, animosity, resentment, and suspicion. Uncertainty. Yeah, uncertainty. Yeah. This totally is. Um, because when you talk about um, have honesty from day one and mm -hmm. live a life of honesty, because yeah. you're living with your true life. Yeah. And you're living with in secret, you're living in doubt, fear, and anxiety, and uncertainties. And, and it's not healthy in the long run. And like you were saying, you waited for a year, but if you actually wasted that time, there's another person is waiting for you on the other line, but you said yes to a commitment that wasn't really fulfilled. Right. I think that, you know, things that are held in secret or things that you hold back, you know, ultimately relationships can't be sustained because the truth rises to the surface eventually. Like you want to live without putting on an act. Yeah. So it's only a matter of time. You know, it's easier to confront it within a year than wait five years and have to confront everything that happened in five years. Yes. Because it's going to have to be confronted. So it, I say, you know, the, the only shortcut to a dream is to, to right now, is to start today. So yeah. the same thing can be said, I think, about, you know, pain and breakups. You know, the, the biggest shortcut to overcoming, um, you know, to getting over a breakup is to begin confronting it today. 
Yeah. And I totally agree with you. How do you move like, you know, when you, how do you move in or move out or move on? Move in, move. Yeah. Uh, so move in. Um, I think that, you know, it has to, again, it's something that people come to me with a lot and I'll just say what I hear about yeah why people come to me, and this is what I would say, don't move in, is they come and they think that I'm waiting for him to invite me to move in with him because that will show me that he loves me. And a lot of the time, the man is older and he hasn't said he loves that person yet. And so they're looking, if I'm not going to get the words, I'll get the grand gesture. Yes. I think that the gesture will, you know, it'll end up creating this home. They'll end up seeing that I'm this type of woman that could take care of them or they'll spend more time with me. That will prove to me that they're really on board with this. And honestly, like you can't take, you can't be, you can't take these huge steps. You know, you can't jump across something and expect to land well. You have to like, if you're going to move in, it honestly has to be the next best step. You can't be looking to kind of, oh, I'm going to go from him not saying I love, I love you to moving in and then he'll say I love you. I mean, mm. certain, I think that there's a certain order to things, you know, don't do something hoping that you're going to get something else out of it. Again, it has to be from a genuine place. It has to be sincere. And I think that we ultimately know if this makes sense to move in with someone. I also don't, I think that it's a problem and it happens a lot today is that, you know, you end up moving in out of convenience and out of, you know, um, financial reasons. And I think that that could end up being a lot of pressure on two people. I think that you move out when you move out. I think if you're going to move out, the relationship is probably over. I think it's hard to come back after that. And once you move on, um, when your efforts in a way aren't being matched, the other person isn't matching them or really acknowledging them because that will create a lot of emptiness to keep on giving and giving and to feel really unseen mm -hmm. and unacknowledged. Yeah. I think that's when you want to be move on because someone is suddenly failing to see you anymore. And in their mind, I think, I think people check out much sooner than they actually break up, you know? So. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a really big factor because I hear that um, sometime I'm like, when do I, you know, move on? When do I check out? Well, is, is there a time frame um, to do this or I just want to move on? You can move on. And a lot of people don't know when to move in or uh, when to move out or to move on overall. But I think there's a lot of confusion in this area. And what really sparks my um, attention about your response is having structure right. and order. There, yeah. There's a certain order that it needs to be in place because there's a proven method of uh, the, the work is working. The love is actually working. It's growing. Right. Right. right? I mean, I think that like people make mistakes when they think that there's like a time frame, right? Yeah. That after a year we should move in and anything like that. And you know, that's not the order I'm talking about. Yeah. I think that you, you're acknowledging that it's an emotional order, you know, like, yeah. you know, when, you know, your emotions are building when the, so I, honestly, it's something that you can feel and, and it's different. Like you can feel that you want to do something out of panic, out of the fear that like someone is letting you go. That's a very different feeling mm -hmm. than something because everything seems to be aligning in your favor and moving you forward, you know? So, so yeah, yeah most order over, you know, this time frame. No, it's true. And um, it's so important to kind of step back and really uh, feel what you feel and uh, recognize what you feel, especially if you're a female, because um, moving in is not going to give you the next step level. It's just going to be wondering what's going on in our relationship. And do you recommend having that conversation from uh, the very beginning or when to have that conversation if we're going to move in and, and why? Is there, is there a method to do that? whether there's a conversation.
there should be like a natural conversation just when you're getting to know someone, you know, I think that you kind of expose whether there's someone that feels like if someone were in their space that they would feel like confined. I think people kind of let on and I've heard a lot of that where, you know, a guy that, you know, someone was with a client of mine that he was someone that kind of the bachelor for a long time. Yeah. And will end up holding on to that life, even though he's with her and Mm -hmm. she wants to be the woman, the exception that changes it. So I think that like, there has to be a real conversation in that dynamic about, does he really want to let go of that thing? What does his home environment represent to him? Does he really think that a woman moving in is somehow controlling in, and does that sort of change panic him? Yeah. Then there's other conversations that there's just an excitement about the idea of having a life together. And I yeah. think these conversations should happen naturally because if they don't happen naturally, you'll never get a natural or honest answer. Um, if you're not having those conversations about living together and what that would look like, mm-hmm. you're probably not in a place that you should be taking that step or thinking too much about it. You know? Yeah, it's true. Um, we want to go back into talking about, you know, you wrote something very significant. How do you normalize a breakup? Like it's, you know, your adrenaline is going up and, you know, we get really emotional about it and we want to vent every, everybody that you, we first see. How do we normalize heartbroken? Like your, your heart is completely gone. We per- it's so hard not to personalize everything, but we feel like during heartbreak that we're the only one that it's happening to, or we're the only one that has felt this bad about it, or I've been this betrayed or this lost. And I think normalizing it is one, the ability to openly talk without shame about the fact that like, we're sad that we've lost someone or we're sad that, you know, we loved someone and we felt like we needed to let them go. Whatever side of it you're on, I think normalizing it is seeing that really that it's universal. You know, these are things that they're, they're phases of our life. They're the things that bring us to the next step that, you know, they're breakthroughs. I think normalizing it is that, you know, you're not wrong for feeling so much. And I think that the question usually is, is it normal that I feel this way? Is it normal that I feel this bad still? Is it normal that I still think about this person or I want them back? And the answer is like, of course it's normal. You know, whatever whatever it is for you, you know, it's not about comparing stories with someone. And if someone, you know, was able to get over them at this time, that means you should too. You know, it's, it's not the length of the love, it's the depth. And no one knows that but you. So, so normalizing it is being able to feel like you can open up and just be someone that feels and be really comfortable and be proud of that in a way. I think that's what I really want with people, even beyond breakups, help them like be, help them honor their story and the feelings. Like, I mean, it's why I, in my columns, especially I open with advice and things to be just as brave. So I think you normalize things by showing kind of the humanity in it and showing that, you know, these conversations, this is what makes us deep. This is what yeah. people fall in people fall in love with the aspects that aspect of us. The fact that we can feel so much. People don't fall in love with someone because they're numb. If you found this video helpful, please share it with your friends because sharing is caring. If you want my help in your relationship or dating situation, you can always book a time with me. Check out the link below. To stay in touch subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell button so you can be notified when I post new videos. Please go ahead hit the like button because it encouraged me to create more content like this every week for you. If you have an idea for a video please leave it in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.